In this video, I'm going to take you through some of the more nitty gritty details that are available to you inside of the scene environment whenever you're working in the Unreal Game Engine. In previous videos, we talked about a lot of the areas and tabs that were outside of the main scene area, but we really didn't talk about the scene area itself. First off, let's talk about navigation. You can use your mouse, cur your mouse as far as, first off, holding in the right mouse button will enable you to look around. Now also, while holding in the mou right mouse button, you can use the W, A, S, and D keys, similar to a gaming layout, to kind of move around the game environment. Now, if you have a middle mouse wheel, you can actually scroll in and out and you can also use it for panning if you push in the middle mouse wheel. Normally, finally, you have the left mouse button, but that's normally used for clicking on and selecting the different elements in the scene environment. So that's how you can move around and interact with the environment. Now, let's talk about across the top of the scene environment here. You may see that you have a lot of different kind of sub options available to you. Starting on the left here, you have a drop down menu that will actually show you as far as different elements in the game environment here. So for instance here, in your viewport, you can show in real time as far as the rendering options. This may be something that if your computer is really hurting as far as being able to display as you are editing and updating simultaneously, you may want to turn this off. Likewise as well, you can show the frames per second as far as your viewport is concerned. So you can see it actually pops up over in the right hand side showing what my frames per second is as I'm working in the game environment. So you can see, you know, I've got some pretty good overall FPS. You also have a lot of different other elements as far as specific bookmarks, creating cameras, uh, high resolution screenshots, and also too, a layout element that if you don't want to just work in the perspective view, you can come in and kind of change around so you also can get this wireframe element more so for control, but you know, nitty gritty type of layout that if you really want to make sure as far as, for instance, this chair here is directly right on top of this floor element here and not actually through the floor, this would be a good option. At any point in time, though, you can come back to the layouts and you can snap back to one pane. Another thing too is if you want to stay in the one pane because maybe you don't have enough uh, screen space or something like that, right next to that drop down menu, you can choose different orthographic views. So I could snap this to left and my entire viewport now is working in the left wireframe. And then if I wanted to at any point in time, I can shift back to perspective view and I can continue working like that. It's really something that you just have to play with and figure out, you know, kind of what you prefer as far as your workflow is concerned. Now, right next to this is also to some things that can help you as far as whenever you're building your game level. For instance, there is an unlit option. This can sometimes help regarding shadows, but also as far as rendering of materials in relationship to the lighting that you set in the Unreal Game Engine. Additionally, you can go one step further as far as wireframing, which can be a little difficult to just strictly work in wireframing. If you're going to want to work with wireframes, I encourage you to maybe use a two-point uh, two view and work with unlit and wireframe. This can also help as far as drastically reducing the amount of information needed for Unreal to run. Lit is probably the most common one. However, as you can see, as I am working, not only am I getting the lighting and reflections from the light that I chose, but it's also generating the shadows for me on the fly as well. Lastly here, you do have a show option where you could turn some of these items off. Like for instance, you could turn off the atmosphere. Uh, you could turn off the fog or even the grid in the background if you needed to. So these are kind of all of the different uh, 
options within the game environment that you might want to turn off. For the size, depending on how you're making your level and depending on how large it is, honestly, some of these flags, if you turned them off, they're really not going to make that big of a difference. So, but be aware that it's there in case you need to. Now let's jump over to the, the other side here, as far as your right side. You actually have three buttons here that can help you control as far as moving objects and widgets in the game environment. You can move and translate, you can rotate, and you can scale. So for instance, if I go ahead and click on this statue here, what you're going to see is you're going to see here a widget pop up that I can now click and drag and move the statue around as far as the table is concerned. I could also choose and come back up to the rotate, which as you can see here, I can now rotate my object. And then lastly, I can click and I can scale the size of my object. Now a couple of things here regarding this. Number one, I'd encourage you that if you're going to continue working in Unreal, notice in each of the parentheses here, you have a notation as far as the keyboard shortcut. Normally when I'm working, it's W, E, and R. My fingers hover over that, and then also too, that gives me the ability then that I can also use those same fingers as far as navigating the environment. But it's more of a time saver. If you're just starting out and you'd prefer to be clicking on the buttons, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Now, some other things uh, that I'd want to draw your attention to in this short video is actually, we're gonna skip over the gizmos here. I wanna draw your attention to these three elements here. Let me go ahead and go back here and let me move the statue again. If you notice here, as I'm dragging, I'm kind of almost getting this stuttering. The stuttering is actually from my settings here as far as the snapping to grid. I can choose as far as clicking on the drop down here as far as my snap sizes. And whenever you make a new level, Unreal is going to make a decision for you as far as your grid size. If you want to, you can change the grid size, for instance, down to one. You can see here it's a little bit better. I'm still getting a little bit of jerkiness, not as bad as when I was at 10. If you want full control, however, you can actually come next to it here and just completely disable the snapping. So now I have a very smooth control over how my object will be interacting with the game environment. The only drawback to this is, is for instance, it might be a little bit difficult to kind of align whenever you're getting trying to place an object on top of another. The same can be said as far as the rotation here. If you noticed when I was rotating, you see how it was snapping to like negative 10, 20, 30, 40. So I'm getting that kind of hard rotation there. Again, I can change the degrees if I want to by clicking on the drop down, or like the grid counterpart, I can actually come in and disable completely and I get a much smoother and much more control over my navigation. Now this is also where if I decide to go this route, if you remember me talking in a previous video about the details panel, this is where the rotation can really come into play here as far as coming in and resetting all of these values here. So maybe I said, okay, you know, I don't want to have it rotated or I rotated it and I can't get it back to an exact number, I can come under the transform options and change that. Finally, same with this last option here, the scaling. I can either set the scale snaps or I can turn it off completely and then I can come back in and now I have a much smoother scaling control as far as my object goes. The only last option we have here is the camera movement speed. This is something that it's a personal preference. I've had students that prefer the camera speed whenever they're moving around to be a little bit slower. So here you can see I'm kind of panning around on a two, 
but I've also had students that prefer to kind of crank it up here. So if I take it up to like seven, you see how quickly I now shoot around the game environment. You take it this high, you're probably going to have to be relying on the world outliner a lot. Again, I'm fine with the default of four to five. I think that's a good speed as far as moving around. But again, this is one of those personal preferences that you can play around with and choose. And that's kind of an overview as far as the submenu system and actually navigating in the scene environment in the Unreal Game Engine.